All right, so we're down in the basement again today working on Britain's 2 meter, 70 centimeter radio. Now this is one I picked up from an estate sale. It's a DMR radio. It is the uh, TYT MD9600. got a really good deal on this one and I got a really good deal on a little TYT handheld, handheld DMR as well. So we're going to get this set up. Yeah, right now it's still configured for the previous owner and so we're going to get it all linked up to Britain's car. Um, one of the things I did is it didn't come with the, uh, the complete harness to connect to your car. Um, it, it has the, the wire that comes out the back as you can see here but then you have to plug it into something. So as you can see here, I had to get this little thing here. And what I did is I got the cigarette lighter. Now I wasn't sure if this was gonna be enough, uh, would be able to handle the draw of this little radio. Um, it's not really clear how much amperage this radio uses. Um, so I wasn't sure if the cigarette lighter adapter would be adequate. Um, but uh, I, I looked at the fuse in the uh, on the radio and the fuse that's actually on the radio is only a 15 amp which is is more than enough because uh, for example the 100 watts on my 891 it only takes about 18 amps to run 100 watts and this uh, TYT is only 50 watts uh, at peak so um, with that being said uh, let's get right to it I am powering it on my uh, jet stream I'll show you that real quick so I am powering this on my jet stream here, but the jet stream is only seven amps. That's the max you can do. So I made sure I do not, do not have the microphone connected to the radio so I can't accidentally transmit um, because the cigarette lighter on the jet stream is, like I said, only seven amps and I don't want to burn it out. It's gonna work really good to get this little radio configured. So we're gonna go ahead now and connect this radio up to Britain's laptop. We're going to go ahead and get this radio now connected to Britain's laptop. She's all ready to go. And uh, we're going to get that set up for her call sign. All right, go ahead and go for it. Right. Go ahead. Oh. All right, so we got a little indicator down below. It said device is ready as soon as we popped it in. Go ahead and click on that, see what it says. Doesn't really say. All right, let's run the setup. If all else fails, skip the instructions. Uh, <laughs> let's go to the setup on the DVD, on the CD, I mean. Okay. Is that the... All right, well, we can't find the right file. I guess we're going to have to read the instructions. Be right back. All right, we found it. That was the thing. Like I said, it was an estate sale, and there was three discs bundled up with it. There was no manual, and we just had to try one of the other discs, and the other disc had the 9600 folder on it. So we are going to go ahead and get that installed. Well, welcome to Microsoft, the worst operating system on the face of the earth. Uh, typical routine, uh, software doesn't run, it crashes out every time. So we're trying to troubleshoot that issue right now. All right, so I went to the website, downloaded all the latest software and firmware, did all that kind of updates, and now I am able to access the radio. So we'll show you, with this radio, it's pretty simple. You just say read data from the radio. I'll show you that real quick. And then she's gonna to go to a website we've already registered with. I'll show you where the website is so she gets her DMR ID. Um, the, the fellow that owned this before already had all the radios, uh, all the local repeaters and everything programmed in. So we'll just show you where those screens are at. Um, but uh, we wanna to get to playing with this real quick so we're gonna just get her ID in. So let's go over to Britain real quick and she is going to go to the website and get her ID. All right, Britain, show them where they go to, to the settings to read the radio. Go to program. Program and click read data. Read data. No, we click it. Yep, go ahead and click it. And then when you go, it'll give when you the you prompt. When you press OK, you want me to do that? Yep, go ahead and 
We'll just show them how it looks. And when it works, that's what you see. And your radio will make a nice little noise. Read data suck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now you can see uh, he has, as you can see here, he's got in this little window here under zone information, he has all the previous repeaters, uh, all the pre repeaters programmed in previously to when he owned the radio. So if you go now to the general settings menu, up at top, you're going to see the call sign and the radio ID number. So Britain has to get her DMR ID number. So we go to a website for that. Okay, you go to www.dmr-marc.net. If you go from dmr-mark, it'll have a link to radioid.net. And so on the top of the radioid.net, there's a database link, and then you can search for your call sign if you've already registered. So we did find Britain. So as you can see, it's right here. You can click on that link, and it gives you a little search area, and then you can get your... Uh, you can look up your call sign that way. So that's what we had to do. Go to the software and paste it in there. Won't let you paste it? Oh. Did it do it? Mm -hmm. And then put your call sign up at top. Okay. All right. And that should be it. Now go up to uh, program and say write data. No, it didn't get your call sign. Oh, so we missed a non-technical setting that's just the uh, cosmetic thing. There's a setting for the intro screen. Go ahead and put your name and stuff in there. Okay. All right, so now we'll just see what it looks like after she writes this change. There you go. So we have uh, zone information, scan list, and then you're gonna see channel information. In channel information is where you can set up all your channels, even for analog. And as you can see, this last guy, he literally put everything in here. And you can put uh, full names. Go ahead and show the Newton one, for example. Be up here. All right, and so then you can then program all the details about that repeater, that analog repeater right there. So that's the basic getting starting started with the radio. Like I say, fortunately, we didn't have to program that all in, but the software, as you can see, obviously makes it really easy to, and that list is huge. So this thing's got a ridiculous size memory on it. I mean, it's, he's got all his digitals and, and then all the, the analog he's got, I mean, he's got everything programmed in here. So that's really slick. Um, so now we can take this out tomorrow and we're going to plug it into Britain's car and we should be good to go and give it a try. So one step closer, Brady. Mm -hmm. You're finally going to get your radio. Mm -hmm. Are you excited? Are you even in the camera? Yeah. <laughs> Are you excited? Yes, I'm excited, Dad. All right. All right. So there you go that's the brief introduction to the 9600 tyt the md 9600 and uh let's see how this thing guy this little thing does tomorrow i got a really good deal at the estate sale i got that with also the uh, 380 390 uh, handheld uh, which is only 70 centimeter um and so i got uh a really good buy on both of these so uh, hopefully they won't be too terrible they're definitely this thing is definitely loud uh that's not an issue so we got the programming phase done and uh, give this thing a try. All right, so we're gonna go out now and uh, plug ra uh, Birdie's radio in and see what we can get. Here we go. Sounds like fun. <laughs> So on a side note, uh, if you've seen my other videos, I got a gimbal to see how I would like that if I decide to go with the GH5S. Um, it's kind of a pain for, for, for vlogging when you want to get close in on something. It's in the way. 
Now it's probably because I do have this long extension on the way on the front, but it also just it's just funky. So that's that's neither here nor there. It has nothing to do with this video, but if you watch my videos, uh, it, it's it's proven to be flush for very frustrating to use. Um, so I'm starting to lean just towards the GH5. Uh, but anyway, back to the uh, the antenna, the radio project. So what we have here. I have my nifty difty parts box. I just order everything in bulk. When I need a part, I don't order one or two. I just go ahead and get a lot of 12, a dozen, whatever. I figure I never know when I'm gonna need them, so I have what we need here. So I'm gonna put a little uh, 90 degree elbow on this thing so it works a little better on, on getting it in the spot here. So we're going to put this uh, 90 degree on here. Sure. Try to get that. Turn that down. That's fine. Enough room to do it. It's not really in the way of the fan. Yeah, that's got clearance. That's good. All right, there we go. So the cord's out of the way. Awesome. That's all the way back. All right, let me go back a little further. I think. And these screws got tightened, right? Yeah. On the sides? Yeah. You, you tighten them up later? Yeah, we can do Are they? They're not tight yet. We need to tighten them. <laughs> Pull that back out and let's tighten those screws. Okay, so this was short-lived. Um, <laughs> incidentally, I'm going through trying to figure out this radio, which I'm going to, now that I have an understanding how the menus lay out, I'm going to go on to Britain's computer and uh, change how he's got things structured. And I'll show you what I've done with that after I've done restructured the, the list of uh, frequencies. But this guy went through and put repeaters for everywhere. He's got them broken down by region. He's got a section for analog. It just, it, it's, it's, he did a lot of work, but they need to just be moved around. And I'm hoping it's just a matter of just moving them in the menu system and I don't actually have to copy, I mean, re-edit and create new entries in other places. Hopefully they can just be copied and moved. Um, but the cigarette lighter thing, I don't know if you're going to see this. I doubt you can see it. Right here. I had to, I tried to get the spring out without busting it, and I used a screwdriver and bent it all up. So I'm talking on this thing, maybe, maybe off and on total of a minute and a half, but not straight. And the radio goes off. And I thought, oh crap, I burned it up. So I pulled the cigarette lighter thing out and the whole end was gone inside. The spring, this whole thing melted. That holds the spring, that pushes the, the fuse forward. This whole thing in here, which I know you can't see in the camera, it literally melted. The fuse didn't blow. The fuse was fine. It really didn't feel that hot. It just melted. So this, cord that I ordered, which was the only one that I could find online, is the same grade cord as the cord, uh, the wire coming out of it is the same gauge wire as what's on the radio. But the only thing I could find to order for that radio with the right har harness, but it might be a standard, I don't know, was the thing with the cigarette lighter. But this thing literally melted. So in any case, uh, I just cut the end off and I have uh, the cigarette lighter thing I bought uh, that's got it's universal, it has little tie-ins on the end so you can run any kind of wires to it um, that I bought from my radio a long time ago, which does fine. In fact, uh, it had no issue um, running higher power through it. And so I went ahead and gave Britain that one and just tied the ends into that. Um, but yeah, this, uh, the plastic on this thing, like I say, the fuse, the wire wasn't even hot, really. I mean, it was warm, but it wasn't like ridiculously hot. The radio does get hot, by the way. Um, the radio was pretty warm, but the the uh, 
the wire wasn't like hot or anything like that, but apparently it was hot enough inside this little thing with the spring that it melted the plastic. So um, definitely the cigarette lighter thing does not work very well. Um, so in spite of the fact that the fuse is perfectly fine. Oh, on another note, I'm here in Newton, Iowa, and immediately I went and pulled up from his list and I was able to talk to the analog repeater in Grimes, which is about, uh, it's about a 35 minute drive. I don't know what it is by birds, you know, by straight, straight line, but probably uh, 25 to 30 miles straight line. But then I was also able to connect to Vinton, the repeater in Vinton, Iowa, which is literally an hour and a half drive from here. So 60, and it's, that's pretty well a straight line. So at least 60 to 80 miles, somewhere in that ballpark would be my guess, um, but at least 60. Uh, hour and a half drive to Vinton. Um, and uh, I was able to connect to Vinton, the Vinton repeater, and I made a contact there as well. It was a little staticky, um, but they heard me, I heard them. We actually had a conversation um, until I started driving further away than, it, than I lost it, but I was sitting at the Walmart. Um, which is just like half a mile from my house, mile, off, well, maybe not a half a mile, about a mile and a half from my house. Um, but, but yeah, it, it uh, that this little 50 watt radio, um, I just have a, a halfway two meter uh, mag mount uh, antenna on a mag mount on that car. Did great um, so far. Uh, I haven't even been able to find, I know our local repeater's on the list, but uh, I haven't even had a chance to try anything else because, like I say, I ran into this power issue. So I'm going to take care of, I got this sorted out, I think. I'm going to throw this in the trash. I'm going to reprogram it so I can find all the repeaters a little easier when I'm using the uh, controls. And tomorrow we're going to give it another shot.